Okay. I'm going to take a look at you first. You've been ever so good, really quiet, sitting there. You're beautiful. You're nearly asleep. Okay. You're beautiful. You all look very healthy and slightly stunned. Okay. Right. Um, one of the nice things about being a poet is, is you get to come to places like this. Aren't we lucky? So just look behind me and look at those trees. They're just gorgeous. I've seen a tree creeper, a rook, and uh, another one, a brown one. <laughs> really very good at bird spotting. And um, this poem is about looking and um, being short-sighted. Becoming short-sighted means flagging down every bus then pretending the northbound bus might go south. Becoming short-sighted means you no longer see the need to dust, and even the oldest of friends look good. Hell, even you look good. Becoming short-sighted means watching TV is like listening to the radio whilst staring at a lava lamp. And February finds you smiling at pale drifts of litter in the park as you call out to passers-by. How lovely the first signs of spring. This poem is um, about a friend of mine who's a window cleaner in, in Liverpool, that's where I live, and um, he is a writer as well, and he told me all about being a window cleaner for this poem, and I love writing poems about people's jobs. And um, this poem won a prize, a Canadian prize, and I had to go to the Canadian embassy and read it. And um, nobody knew what a chamois was, or a vestibule. I think they thought it was a slightly kind of sexy poem. So I'm assuming as we're in Manchester, you all know what a chamois is and a vestibule. And this poem is called Protecting His Round. He could hear an extending ladder go up from half a mile away. His knife and fork would clatter to the plate and we'd listen to the back gate bang while Mam served a glare to each of us. Eat your food. He was only protecting his round and he wasn't even our dad. But as she scraped his dinner straight into the bin, it felt as if we'd lived here forever with his galvanised buckets and blue wooden cart wedged across the yard. Every night he'd rinse the chamois, soft as scrambled egg and pale as something sinful. Mam's sister told a neighbour that he was a saint, but went quiet seeing me under the table, where I hid amongst the smell of knees, worrying, didn't saints die? We all knew he had a way with animals, working a brick maze of wary cats and howling dogs. And when he appeared at their sky, he'd do this hissy whistle so the dogs would dance, willing their noses to touch his hand. And the cats arched up to his wet fingers, leaving palmfuls of wet fur. He knew all their names, Spike, Paddy, Bolter. Paddy's had kittens, he'd say at supper. Then he'd tell us how many and what colour. I don't remember Mam ever looking right at him. Like in a panto, she was always making eyes at some audience, as if to say, what's he like? His hands were so clean, and all the women loved him for doing the corners and their vestibule glass. Why didn't Mam see how carefully he wiped the sills? Why didn't she let us have a kitten? Get a van, she'd say. Do those office blocks in town. And he'd push himself out of his chair to go knocking up, his pockets heavy with change. Okay, you've gone very quiet now. I might have to put my glasses on and look at you again. See if you're just checking how you are. 
This poem is for um, a, a great Liverpool poet, Matt Simpson, who was a good friend and um, really supported me with my writing. And we lost him this year, last year. And so this poem is for him. It's about the Mersey. And um, I need you to join in with me. Yes, I mean you. She's looking out the window thinking, oh, not me. Please, not me. Yes, you. And uh, um, it's about the River Mersey and all its fabulous, complicated tides and the ferry boats. And it's called Row, Flow, Blow. And I need you to whisper with me. Row, flow, blow. Can you do that? Row, flow, blow. All of you, row, flow, blow. Even you, row, flow, blow. Keep that going. Row, flow, blow. An old man in a boat asked me. He asked me how to go. I know. I said, I know. Row, you've got to row. The tides of the sea, they asked me. They asked me how to go. I know, I said, I know. Flow, you've got to flow. The wind behind the sails asked me. It asked me how to go. I know, I said, I know. You've got to. You've got to. Row, you've got to row. Flow, you've got to flow. Row, you've got to row. Blow, you've got to blow. Thank you. This poem is, um, that poem is uh, for children. And um, this next one is also from my new children's collection, which is going to be called If You Could See Laughter. And this poem is called As Soft As The Blanket. I can touch a coin and tell you if it's heads or if it's tails. I'll taste a loaf of bread and swear the baker wore blue shoes. One silver raindrop on my tongue and I feel the height of its fall. If I brush a feather along my wrist, I know the miles it flew. Say a daft thing and make me grin. I'm as soft as the blanket you wrap me in. If I touch to my lips a stem of grass, I know what hour it was cut. If I smell a yellow pencil, I'll tell you the last word it wrote. I can taste in a grain of salt the whale songs of the sea. And if I touch your sleeping head, I know the color of your dreams. Say a daft thing and make me grin. I'm as soft as the blanket you wrap me in. The Weight of Cows is the title of um, my second collection. And I worked with my sister, Suko, who's a, an artist. And we did um, a big project on the meat industry. And she's really involved in that and done massive paintings and lots of exhibitions in America. And we toured a lot of places where animals are processed. And um, some of the things I saw were really quite almost abstract in their strangeness of how animals are processed. This poem is called The Weight of Cows. Cows are impossibly heavy. They are the dark matter that astrophysicists talk of. All the weight of the universe can be accounted for if you include cows. It is this weight that splays hooves deep into the mud, draws milk down to bursting udders, makes cow pats slap the earth with uncanny force. Even milked out, they move heavily, arching knuckled backs under the sting of the auctioneer's stick. They buckle and stagger as if their very bones were recast from bedsteads rusted park railings. To see a cow hoisted into the air by one hind leg is to witness the death of a planet. 